Greetings and Namaskara everyone. This Samayan Academy Publications presentation is by Sakguru Bodhinatha Valen Swami and is in two parts. The first part is from Gurudeva's introduction to our book Dancing with Shiva in which he speaks on the importance of effort. There is a strong tendency when a student first begins meditation to want to give up external things, to give up work and devote more time to making his meditation the perfect thing. But this is not the spirit of the Master Course. Many more forces that are negative would result from his turning away from the world as possibly already occurred in his work in the exterior world prior to his ever hearing about meditation. The thrust of the Master Course Correspondent Study is to push yourself to new heights, to improve all aspects of your life. It is you encouraging yourself forward on the path. If someone wants to meditate, Gurudeva said that step one is to prove to himself that he can work positively in the world, performing his duties with full energy, intuiting how the whole mechanism of life is constructed, the exterior world, his mind, himself. Master the simple things, perform every task, even the most mundane act, to perfection. Then 10, 15, or 20 minutes of good dynamic meditation a day and their master course studies to guide the mind along in a step-by-step -step manner are more than sufficient. It comes down to readjusting our thinking and making our point of reference the reality within ourselves instead of the reality and permanence of the external world of things, forms, and fancy. Once our whole philosophical structure is recolored with Saiva Siddhanta thinking, it is easy to throw the mind into meditation. Then in our daily life, no matter how many external things and material affairs we are involved in, our point of reference is that the energy within and the core of the energy and the self itself are real. Don't feel depressed about what needs to be done and don't renounce it. Instead, really work at it. The key is to put more energy into each activity you are engaged in. Put your whole self in it. Get enthusiastic about it. Then you are flooding more life force through the body, right from the center of life itself. Having the self as a point of reality reference and not the material things with the life force constantly flooding through these nerve currents, you are actually seeing what you are doing as part of the cosmic dance of Shiva, as the energy of Shiva flows in and through you. Through this practice, you can cut through many of your deep-rooted subconscious hang-ups that were provoked in past lives without having them come to the surface, simply by creating a new habit pattern of facing and looking at yourself as a divine being performing your dharma and God Shiva's perfect universe. You create the new habit patterns by doing everything as best you can, with as much forethought and as much energy as you can command. This approach will bring steady progress on the path of personal spiritual realization and transformation. The second part of this presentation is a story from our book, The Guru Chronicles, in which Gurudeva shares how his fourth catalyst trained him how to use his willpower to get things done in the material world in a section entitled, Meeting His Mentor's Challenges. As a young man in the late 1940s, Gurudeva took a ship to Ceylon where he studied with his fourth catalyst on the path Dayananda Priyadasi, Darrell Pierce, a Sinhalese Buddhist who, during his first visit to the U.S. in 1934, had established an ashram at the Oakland home of Robert's second catalyst, Mother Christney. 
Dayananda was a dynamic teacher of meditation and occultism and a great patriot of this island nation. Ceylon was then in the final stages of 21 years of active struggle for independence from Great Britain, which it gained in 1948. The times on this beautiful island nation were unsettled, and the 50th Dayananda, who was both meditative mystic and charismatic politician, took advantage of the situation to train his new protege personally in the art of getting positive things done in the world. Within months of his arrival, Robert helped found two schools for village children, assisted in reviving the dormant Candian dance, worked with local Buddhist monks, and introduced electric power saws to carpenters who had never seen such contraptions. These down-to-earth projects were a part of his early training. He later recounted this story. I was happy and awed to meet my fourth catalyst on the island of Sri Lanka, a Buddhist. He was a strong, active Sinhalese man dedicated to spiritual awakening and bringing this through in a vitally helpful way to all of humanity. He had been high in Sinhalese government and was practical and forceful as a teacher. I studied with him for one year and a half. In earlier years, Dayananda attained enlightenment in a cave in Thailand by sitting in the morning, eyes fixed upon the sun, following its travel across the sky all day long until it set at night. He practiced under his guru this most difficult sadhana. Then one night, while meditating in a cave, the cave turned to brilliant light, and a great being appeared to him, giving him his mission and instructions for his service to the world. My fourth catalyst taught me how to use the willpower, how to get things done in the material world. He was a real father to me. I needed this at 21 years of age. I wanted to meditate, but he wanted me to work to help the village people in reconstructing the rural areas. He assigned me to do different duties, sometimes several at a time, which I had to work out from within myself. One was seeing that a new village bridge was put up that had been washed out in a flood and bringing into another village modern carpentry equipment to replace traditional tools used in building furniture. I had to take a survey of all the carpenters using handsaws on the west coast of Sri Lanka. I went around with a notebook and listed all their names and addresses and the types of saws they were using, for my assignment was to see that they all would eventually be provided with electric saws. Getting modern equipment in the Moratua area was one of the biggest assignments I had ever had, and I had no idea how to begin, for I had never done anything of this nature in my life. Occasionally my catalyst would ask, well, have they gotten their saws yet? All I could say was, well, I'm working on it. Executing governmental changes was strange to me. My life had been quiet, with no exposure to methods of business. But even worse, I was in a foreign country that had different customs, subtle ways of relating and suggesting. Most of the educated could speak English beautifully. In the villages, however, only the native languages, Sinhalese and Tamil, were spoken and understood. The craftsmen were accustomed to the old ways, their father's ways, of making furniture and were not easily persuaded that electric saws would improve their work. Some had grown up in remote regions where there was no electricity, no running water, so naturally they resisted such a massive change. They made good sturdy furniture already. Why complicate life further? They must have thought. My natural shyness was the biggest barrier though. I had to interview people, do research and convince people of the practicality of electric equipment. Finally it unfolded to me from the inside how to go about it. I drew up an elaborate proposal, long and wordy, with myriad details, diagrams, names and addresses. I gave it to him. He was pleased and said, now what I want you to do is take this fine proposal to the head of the Department of Rural Reconstruction. You give it to him and I will do the rest. 
but while you are in his office, sit down with him and tell him how fast work is done in your country by using modern equipment to make furniture. I was happy. At last I had something definite to do that would bring this project to a successful end. I went into Colombo to the Office of Rural Reconstruction and presented the proposal. The government was convinced, and not many months later the modern electric saw became available and popular in the Moratua villages for any carpenter who needed one. Sri Lanka had just that year received its independent dominion status from the crown, and there was a lot to do to bring the rural areas up to better standards. I did my part in the best way I knew how and was glad to do it. One assignment like this after another was given to me. This fourth catalyst of mine worked on the philosophy that you do what you're told. If you are given an assignment, do it to perfection. Finish it and don't come back with excuses. If he sent you on a mission, you wouldn't dare return until you had completed that mission, not to your satisfaction, but to his. He might have nothing more to do with you if you failed. I knew that. So I was very, very careful, inside myself as I struggled to do tasks that seemed impossible. I could hear him sailing, don't fail, don't fall short. You create the obstacles. You can overcome anything, do anything, be anything. He challenged me to work problems out from within myself, offering little advice and often assigning a task and then just leaving. He was quick to point out my mistakes, even though he knew I was sensitive and couldn't stand being scolded, still he scolded and criticized harshly. This was good for me, and I am still thankful for his direct and powerful ways. He made me use my own inner intelligence to complete each assignment, most of them were of a worldly nature. At this time in my life, that is exactly what I needed, to strengthen the outer shell to face the path ahead and learn to accomplish duties in the world. It was invaluable in later years. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti